Hello and welcome, welcome to my YouTube channel, I'm William T and today we have a very special guest with us, Min! Ah, hi everyone! Min's a first year fashion design student and today we are going to do the iFollow a tutorial via voice over only. Now I first saw this video through Simply Neological, love her, um, and I thought it would be a great challenge to do. And so I had Min find a video for me to do. That's right. So I found a really amazing voiceover challenge for William. So do you want me to give the name to you? Yes, please. So her name is With Wendy, and she has a lot of subscribers on Instagram and YouTube, which we'll link down below for you to follow as well. So I have been one of her followers for quite a long time now, and she's helped me through a lot of tutorials on how to make different types of garments. I love her coats, I love the different dresses that she makes that I make for my friends, and it's helped me a lot of knowledge on how to work my way around garments in the fashion industry. And she helped me a lot um, to prep up my portfolio to get into the course. So thank you, Wendy, for that. So this one, I chose your video for this video for William. I thought I helped you a lot to your portfolio. Yeah, you helped me a lot too <laughs> as well. But she helped me with a little bit of this and that. So I guess you both, you know, equivalently helped me out. Yeah. I know Wendy. She is so cute. She's very cute mm. and she's very fashionable. And she has a great knowledge of, you know, all the sewing techniques and that. So I can't wait to do the tutorial today. Mm. All right, I'm excited. Let's get started. Let's get started. All right. Okay. So I have loaded the voiceover onto my phone. Let's get started. Hey everyone, it's me, Wendy, and today I'm going to be showing you how I made this satin dress. I've been going to a lot of weddings this summer, and it's kind okay. of been a fun challenge to make my own dress. So we're making a so satin dress today. Halter-ish neckline. They are separated, so it's not like a true halter. It's got a pretty bare back, and there's pockets, because if you're making your own dress, you should just throw in pockets. You're giving me pockets too? <laughs> To make this dress, I used two yards of pretty stiff satin so that it would have the bouncing shape. Two yards of satin. There we go. But if you stay until the end, I'll show you a hot pink version that I made. And I'll share some quick updates for me because I know I've been a little bit absent over the last two weeks. If you're new here and you want to see more videos on how I make stuff, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you after the tutorial. Let's begin. This tutorial has quite a few steps, but we can do this. So we're going to start with the teal fabric. It's a stiff satin. I have two yards of this and two yards of the hot pink stiff satin. Am I using two colors? In total, I'm going to be making two dresses. So no, I'm this one. Switching back and forth a bit between the teal and the hot pink, but I followed the exact same steps for both of the dresses. I traced a halter that I already own and then lay that down on the satin folded in half. That way I'm cutting through two layers. One of these is going to be the top and the other one is going to be the inner lining of the dress. Once you have your two front layers, we're going to get the back layers as well. What I do for this is I fold down the top edge of the pattern and then fold it in half, and that's going to show me how tall the back pieces need to be. Wait, what? Four layers of fabric in total, and that's because the back is split down. Is she just like tracing off an existing pattern? Yes. <laughs> okay. Don't you have patterns? Yeah, I do, but you know. What kind of like design is she doing? I don't know, I guess you're just having to make like, at your own. So that you can remember how to orient these. You don't have to be, you know, just try your best. <laughs> make your own version. Let's see what your ones turn out like. After that, reduce the bulk by cutting off the excess fabric. And then okay, let's back, the back it up. Fun, fun. Say what? Okay, so she's. So the back part is gonna be half the height of the front, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so I suppose I should print out my hot neck pattern and start from there. Okay, so I do my pattern making illustrator. This is the hot neck wedding dress named Julia. 
uh, that I'll be showing you how I do soon. Um, and I guess I'm just going to print this one out and follow Wendy's instructions. <laughs> Uh, let me know if you want me to do a tutorial on how I pattern make an illustrator. Comment down below. Okay, she doesn't go into like what kind of design does she? <laughs> mm -hmm. You can you can talk. Oh. Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Okay, all I know is that the front, sorry, the back is half the length of the front. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's mix that up. 41, so 20 and a half. That's really high. Is she gonna have like enough room for her armhole? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, you know, is there going to be enough space for her arm? Her arm her underarm? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know, you see. <laughs> okay, uh, since there's going to be more fabric on this side seam, I'm just going to put some ease in the bust area. Okay, and I think I'm just gonna do a strap that goes from the front around the neck instead of having a um, neck band. Okay, let's continue. Back layers as well. What I do for this is I fold down the top edge of the pattern and then fold it in half and that's going to show me how tall the back pieces need to be. This time I'm cutting through four layers of fabric in total and that's because the back is split down the middle and you need two layers so that ends up being four pieces in total. Here you can see the four layers they've been cut along the line of symmetry and now I'm just going to slice them down the middle so that it can split for the zipper. When you've got these four layers, the last step is to put in a little mark so that you can remember how to orient these pieces. I cut off a tiny little corner on the upper right hand and that marks the upper edge of the side of the body. Why does she need to cut the corner off? 
to orient the pieces. <laughs> 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 the what? She needs to what? Um, well, I think I think she's like she's cutting off a corner, just to like know what direction the piece is, possibly. Possibly, yeah. Possibly. <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna skip that step. Okay. To make the straps, I cut a strip of fabric that was 1.5 inches wide. Then I cut a piece of string that was just a bit longer than that strip of fabric. We're going to sew them together along the top, then fold the whole thing over and sew it down with a straight stitch, getting that string onto the inside. After that, reduce- Wait, what? <laughs> why does she need a string? <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll find out why she needs a string, don't worry, just keep listening to it. You'll know why. <laughs> Don't worry. By cutting off the excess fabric and then start pulling on the string and as This is a huge hint for you. Invert the entire cord so that it is now right side on the outside. Okay, she's doing a ruler loop. Assembling the top. The first thing I did was fold those front pieces in half right sides together right. and then lay down some pins so that it stays in place. A satin is pretty slippery, so wherever possible, lay down some pins to keep everything frozen. We're going to sew a straight stitch down the middle and that puts in that center seam. This wasn't totally necessary, but for some reason I really wanted to Put in that center seam. I think I just like the way. It okay, she's got a center seam. Pieces, go ahead and put them you right know why she needs a string before, yeah? Um, for the yep. halter. Mhm. Mm okay, so she's got a separate. So that's not connected. Oh, sorry. Um, that's not all in one. Pin them all along the top edge. The next step will be to take the cords that you made, shove them inside from the bottom, and then pin them in place. We're going to sew all the way across the top edge, along the curve, the straight, and the other curve, and that's going to put your straps in place as well. I'll flip it inside out to show you. Ta-da! Here we have the cords, and they're in their spots in the upper corners of the halter. Next, we're going to take those four back pieces that we cut out, rearrange them so that they're right sides together, and then sew them together along the upper edge. When we open these up, one side is going to be showing on the outside, and the other is the inner lining. We've got the two back pieces, and... But Wendy, what's the design like? <laughs> the one front piece, and we're going to join them together. I pin the two sides to the front along the middle seam and down the two sides, and when I flip it right side out, this is how it looks. We're going to sew down with a straight stitch, and that's going to attach the back to the front. When you're done that, the top edge can be a little bit bulky. I took care of this by ironing the seam flat. You can also use a hair straightener if you don't have an iron. To make sure that this tapers inwards at the waist, we're going to be adding four darts, two on the outside and two on the lining. The way I do this is I fold the fabric in half, touching the middle front seam to the side seam and then pinning it down to keep it stable. After that, I lay down a cue card and follow that angle to go from the top edge all the way to one inch outwards from the bottom. When you sew along those pins, you're going to end up with triangles that will form your darts. Some of my darts needed to go a little bit taller, so I just continued the stitch and dragged it out another centimeter. We are ready to move on to the skirt! Okay, so she's adding darts in. Uh, I have already removed the darts in my pattern. <laughs> Uh, let's see... What can I do? <laughs> so I'm just gonna reintroduce them back in. <laughs> You gonna what? I'm just gonna reintroduce the darts back in. Enjoy!
Okay, I'm assuming that when she says four dots, she means like two in the front and two in the back. So that's right. And then that's gonna be my back dot. <laughs> and I think I might close the dot up here and move it to the side seam. This is what we're learning first year. Dart manipulation at school. Okay, I'm with the tutorial. <laughs> okay, I need to like go back to the um ruler loop. <laughs> Is 2.5, half of that is 1.25, so 3.75 centimeters. <laughs> Yay! We are ready to move on to the skirt. For the skirt, I cut two pieces that were one yard wide each, and then the height depended on how long you wanted it from the waist down to the knees typically. With those two pieces on one of them you want to cut it in half down the middle because that's going to be the two back pieces and they do need the separation in order to fit the zipper in between. This leaves us with one big front piece and two back pieces that are half of its width. The last thing I want to talk about is pockets. I cut these two shapes that are roughly 8 inches by 16 inches and then gave them a little bit of a slope because pockets do point downwards. I pinned these to the side of the skirt about 3 inches down and then sew it down with a straight stitch. I open it up, lay down the back piece, measure it to be 3 inches down again, pin it in place and then sew that with a straight stitch as well. So the whole time we're sewing right side of the pocket fabric to the right side of the skirt fabric. To finish off the side, you can fold the pocket fabric in half and that's going to bring the front and the back of the skirt together along their raw edges. I pin it all the way down from the top, around the pocket, and then all the way down to the bottom and that is the straight stitch that we're going to sew. When you're done, you can open up the back piece and here you'll see there's a little invisible pocket just for you. Go ahead and attach the pocket on the other side and then we're going to get the skirt ready for gathering. To gather the skirt, I sew down two straight stitches that are parallel to each other along the top edge with the widest stitch length possible. Then take the two top threads on one side, tie them together in a knot, and the two bottom threads on the other side and tie those together into a knot. When you pull on the threads that you didn't tie into knots, the skirt is going to start gathering along those two parallel threads. I gather the fabric until it's roughly the circumference of my waist and then we'll move on to attaching the zipper. For the zipper, try as hard as you can to make sure that it's matching and invisible. But the first step is to open it up so that the teeth are pointing away from the raw edge and pin it down. If you want some more details on how to attach invisible zippers, I have a link in the description for you. What I usually do is I pin the zipper down on both sides that need to be attached and then switch in a zipper foot on my sewing machine and sew it down with a straight stitch. It's always a good idea after you're done that to zip it up and make sure it looks right. So here we have it zipped up and it's invisible. This part was a bit of problem solving for me. I don't know if this is typically how any of these dresses are made, 
but what I did was I took the raw edges on the lining side, folded it inwards and sewed it down with a straight stitch and then also folded in that bottom corner to tuck it out of the way of the zipper. So I take the inner lining, fold over the raw edge, sew it down with a straight stitch and then the next step is to fold over the corner. I folded it in about two inches and sew that down with a straight stitch as well. When you're done, go ahead and flip that back to the inside of the top and that's how I finished off the inner layer of the back. Again, satin is super slippery, so before you attach the skirt to the top, I really advise adding one straight stitch along the bottom edge of the top to keep everything super secure. So I pinned it down and sewed it all around with a straight stitch. I also had a bit of excess fabric going on on the bottom edge, so I cut that off as well. It's time to pin the top to the skirt. What I do is I lay them down right sides together, pin them along the two sides, and then work your way down the center front and keep moving symmetrically from there. You want your side seams where the pockets are on the skirt to line up with the side seams of the top. So always look for those seams and pin them together before you pin other parts. When it is all pinned up, we can sew it down with a straight stitch all the way around. Take your time because it is kind of tricky to sew gathered fabric and do what you can to even out the folds as you go with your fingers. If I flip the skirt out of the way, bam, we have the top attached to the bottom and it's gathered. We have a couple more steps, but at this point you can finally try it on and actually get a good idea of how it looks. If everything is looking okay, go ahead and pin the zipper down the entire back. We only did the zipper all the way to the bottom of the top, but in reality we have to take it as far as it can go down on the skirt. Switch in the zipper foot and then sew all the way down the left side and the right side of the back zipper. Go ahead and zip it all up from the bottom and all your excess raw fabric should be tucked away nice and clean. If you flip the skirt so that we're looking at the back seam and we have the right sides touching each other, we can sew that together with a straight stitch to finish off the entire back that is below the zipper. Mine had a teeny tiny bit of misalignment so I evened that out a little bit and then we're going to finish off the bottom by folding over the raw edge once and sewing it down with a straight stitch. You can then go ahead and fold that over one more time and that just helps your... I finished! Okay, let's uh, try it on the dress form and see how it looks. Presentable-ish. <laughs> uh. So, I mean, what do you think? I think that you did an amazing job. <laughs> Considering um, it's your first attempt on a voiceover, this is actually really, really neat. Like, Obviously your craftsmanship is absolutely spot on, no doubt about that. I can zoom up and show everyone this later, um, but I guess the design... Why are you like pulling it down? <laughs> <laughs> I know, because the armhole, I guess the armhole... The, um, yeah, the armhole's too high. The armhole's a little bit high, however, you know, it's a really good attempt. Like, this looks really beautiful. Um, it's similar to her one, I guess. Is it? Yeah. Okay, I'm really anxious to see what Wendy made. But this is really cool. I love how they have pockets in here. Look at this. Wow! It's kind of been a fun challenge to make my own dresses for them. This one has a halter-ish neckline. They are separated, so it's not like a true yeah, halter. Halter-ish. It's got a <laughs> bare back. And there's pockets, because if you're making your own dress, you should just throw in pockets. I did not hear the bare back. Uh, <laughs> that's the desk. <laughs> this was like so hard to know what to do because you really need to see the shape of it. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering why she said cords. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Wendy, you misled me. That was not a halter top. So, um, I think I get a pass on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'd like to apologize to Wendy for butchering her tutorial. Um, and, uh, 
Yeah, thank you, Min, for <laughs> picking this out for you. Oh, well, that was so difficult. <laughs> did you have fun making it? No. No, he didn't have fun, but I had fun watching him do it. So yeah, thank you so much, Wendy, for your tutorial. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have been able to pick this out for him to try it out. So, thank you so much, and thank you for you guys for watching. Alright, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I have a, another hot neck video coming up really soon, uh, so make sure to check that one out. That's right. Alright, bye! <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it. Hello and welcome. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're gonna do this. Okay. okay. Alright, so I have loaded the voiceover onto my phone and now let's get started. <laughs>